The kingdom of Tamna ruled Jeju Island, the largest island in South Korea. Its mythological foundation was in 2345 BC. Tamna became part of the Joseon dynasty in 1404. For almost 3,000 years, Tamna was either a sovereign, tributary, or vassal state throughout its history. Tamna is also known as Tangna, Sanma, and Tamora. These names are from the Jeju language and mean island country. Europeans knew the island by the name Kelpar since 1653. From the name of the first European ship to spot the island, a Dutch ship named Kelpach. Jeju Island's nickname is Samudo Samdado, Island of Three Lacks and Three Abundances. The three abundances are rocks, wind, and women. This is actually a self deprecating nickname. There are less men because there are lots of typhoons and men die at sea a lot. There are rocks because it's a volcanic island and thus hard to farm. The three lacks are thieves, beggars, and gates, meaning people moved around freely. There is no historical record on the foundation and early history of Tamna, but a foundation legend was passed down orally throughout the ages. This is known as the Samsung mythology. The three divine founders of the country were Go Ulna, Yang Ulna, and Bu Ulna. It is said that they emerged from three holes in the ground in the 2300s BC. These holes can still be found in Jeju City. They are called Samsung Hyol. Samsung means three stars in Korean. The three gods found a box that washed up on the shore. Next to it was a lion. They opened the box and found three virgins in blue dress farm animals, and five grain seeds. The lion proclaimed to them that his master, the king of the east, gave birth to three daughters. He knows of the three gods and that they want to build a kingdom, yet they have no wives. They should take his daughters to accomplish a great cause. The lion rode off on the cloud and left them. They married in order of their age then fired their bows in the sky, and where the arrows would land is where they would each live. They planted the grains and raised cattle and horses and had a good livelihood. One interesting thing to note here is, who was that king of the east? East of Jeju Island is Japan. So, was he Japanese or perhaps from another mythical land? I have read that this mysterious land was actually Wando Island, located in Jola province, but that is located north of Jeju Island, not east as the legend goes. Nothing else is known about their mythical rule. This foundational myth takes place in a similar time period as the Dangun foundation myth found on the mainland of Korea, which was in the year 2333 BC. It is said that the original people of Tamna were short and spoke the same language as mainlanders. They wore clothes made of dog or pig skins. They raised cattle and pigs and lived among many deer and roe deer. In summer they lived in straw huts and lived in caves during winter. Archaeological findings indicate that Tamna traded with many Asian countries. Tamna traded with Han Dynasty China Yayoi Japan, the Srivijaya Empire, now part of present-day Indonesia, the Kingdom of Singapore, a Malay kingdom in and around present-day Singapore, and the Tamil Chola dynasty, now part of modern-day India. Of course, Tamna traded with the various Korean dynasties. Tamna is first mentioned in the Chinese chronicle of the Sangguozi, records of the three kingdoms. In it, it mentions a strange people living on a large island near Korea. They had a distinctive language and culture. They traded with the Mahan people on the Korean peninsula. The Mahan was a confederacy of small states that existed between 100 BC and 500. The Mahan confederacy 
was overtaken and absorbed by Pekje. The Samguk Sagi mentions that Tamna entered a tributary relationship with Pekche in the year 476. Tamna had strong ties with Japan and Pekje. When Pekje was overtaken by Shilla, Tamna became a tributary state of Shilla in 662. Tamna became a vassal state of Goryeo in 938 and was annexed in 1105 becoming semi-independent of Goryeo and a gun, a county in Goryeo's original administrative division. In 1153, Tamna became a hyun, which was smaller than a gun. As a result, the Tamna kingdom system disappeared. Only the official post of Songju and prince remained symbolically. When the Yuan dynasty subjugated Goryeo, the Mongol Empire established a base on Jeju Island. They converted a part of the island to a grazing area for their cavalry. There was an anti-Mongol rebellion, the Sambyol Cho. The leader was a certain Pe Jung Sun, a Goryeo general. He was strongly opposed to Mongolian rule of Goryeo and even China. He was against King Wanjong moving the capital to Kegyong from Gangwa Island. The Sambyolcho moved to Jindu Island in 1270, but were destroyed by Goryeo and Mongol troops. Some survivors fled to Jeju Island and banished the king of Tamna in 1270. Their leader was at that time Kim Tong Jong, a Goryeo general. The rebels sought help from the Japanese Kamakura shogunate, but none came. They regained some strength and looted the Korean coast. In 1272, the rebels were crushed. Tamna was then controlled by the Yuan dynasty until 1294. During that time, it is said that some elements of Mongolian language were introduced in the local Jeju language and still present nowadays. There are 45 known kings of Tamna. The first nine or so are possibly mythical, seeing how their period of reign ranged from 80 years all the way up to 600 years. In 1404, Taejong of Joseon placed Tamna under central control of his empire. Tamna was no longer a kingdom and the aristocratic class of Tamna was completely flattened. In 1629, the Joseon government banned the immigration of Jeju inhabitants to the mainland. Jeju was used as a place of exile during the Joseon dynasty. In the mid-17th century was written the Tamna Ji, an history of Jeju and its people as well as geography of the island. In it, the author writes that the customs of Jeju Island natives are frugal and polite, and it is difficult to understand their dialect. The people do not use Feng Shui, Pung Su Jiri, or divination, but live a long life. They have a family graveyard on top of a hill located on their farmland. The weather is always warm and there are no ferocious beasts in the mountains, meaning tigers and bears, like on the mainland. On the full moon of August, Jeju Islanders compete in a tug of war between men and women. People also sing and dance. This is called Juri Hi. Jeju has a unique custom of gathering stones and building walls around the fields. The roof of their houses was also different than the ones on the mainland. In that same written account, the author talks about the tangerines that are grown here, a specialty of the island. It's called gyul in Korean. Another book recorded all the orchards and the amount of trees and fruit that were grown. That's serious bureaucracy and bookkeeping for you. The spoken language on Jeju is closely related to Korean but it is not mutually intelligible to mainland Koreans. Sadly, there are less than 10,000 speakers of the Jeju language and they're all over 70 years old. The Dol Harubang, the rock statues found all over Jeju Island, are considered to be offering to the gods for protection and fertility. They were usually placed outside of gates for protection against demons, but now are found in many other places. 
They are carved from porous basalt, better known as volcanic rock. Dol Harubang comes from Dol, which in Korean means stone, and the Jeju dialect word Harubang meaning grandfather. Grandfather is Haraboji in standard Korean. The origins of these statues are unknown, but there are a couple of theories as to their origin. One is that they were introduced to the island from visitors from the sea, maybe Chinese. Another is that they are a counterpart to the totem poles found on mainland Korea. Another theory poses that they are from a shamanic mushroom culture, seeing that their heads are similar to mushrooms. The Tamnaji records that the first Dol Harubang was made in 1754. Jeju Island is also home to Halasan, the highest mountain in South Korea at 1,947 meters. It's centrally located and on a cloudless day you can see it from almost anywhere on the island. It has been considered sacred in Jeju and also the mainland. It's a shield volcano that has been reclassified active just recently. From Halasan's eruptions were formed lava tube caves, which you can visit if you go to Jeju Island. The mountain and these caves must have played an important role in Tamna myths and legends, but sadly, I couldn't find any documentation on this topic. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more Korean history videos.